here all day yesterday and uh, come back this morning. Is this format favorable to you? Is this a good idea to make it two days or would you like to keep it into one day? Raise your hand if you like this format. Okay, so if we did it this way again next year, that'd be okay? Okay, good, good. Uh, because, uh, yeah, this came about with a little, uh, this is really different this year for us. So I just found one guy, he asked me if uh, he'd be able to quote him something afterwards. And they go, well, I tell you what, I haven't been sleeping very good. And number one, I charged for everybody to show up this year. And then I had some people not very happy about that. But they have no idea what this cost to put on. And uh, the 150 bucks is nothing. I mean, they don't even put a dent in it. So then I thought, well, yeah, that's kind of stupid. It didn't even put a dent in the cost. And then you charge, and then you tick some people off that you charge. But uh, so, yeah, I didn't sleep very good. I didn't sleep very good the first <coughs> the week and last night I was up again at 1.30 and I didn't, you can't get back to bed because I didn't really know what I was going to do this morning. And I was wondering, did you wake up? This is all my dreams go. You wake up and go, I'm here and nobody else showed up. You know, <laughs> then I'm waiting to get back home or do something or find out if I showed up on the wrong day. You know, you just go, but anyway, that, I, I, that's, I do appreciate you all coming and uh, I appreciate all the work that my guys did, and they were here early this morning getting the breakfast ready, and, and uh, it tasted very well, by the way, Rod and your wife, and all that help, that's really neat. Okay, there's a couple things. The sun is shining, and um, Forrest asked, we did, you know, we let Woody off the hook, so we don't have any 494 stuff. We kind of, and I actually toyed with playing some of his a slide from last year, but we're not quite prepped for that. But what I would like to do, Forrest was willing, to force to you? Right here. Okay. Two things. Now we're going to come back in here and do shredded, and I want you to sit by the tables when we come back in here and do shredded. We're going to do two things before we do that. We're going to do a quick walk around that, that chopper back there with the panels up, and we're going to have a, Forrest is going to give a little brief discussion about depth. Is that the right way to say that? Because that's coming. Uh, some of you are already dealing with it, but if you get new choppers this year, or you, you're thinking about buying new choppers, I think there's some stuff you should know about this depth stuff. And some of you already got it in some of your vehicles. It's it's different. Um, so we're gonna. That, look, how many? What do you got? Ten minutes? Maybe not even. Yeah, ten fifteen at home. So we'll crowd around that machine. Then what we're gonna do is walk outside since it's sunny. It's not raining. And, and I want you guys to watch this thing pick up windrows out here. We're going to do two things. They're going to start up the chopper. First, we're going to have the Mark show you the spout pilot. If anything was impressive in our demos last year, it was the spout pilot. And you're able to do that on all the new 494s, but it is really cool. And what it does, just so you know what you're watching for, all the spout pilot tracks where the deflector is on your side blowing. And it keeps that deflector in the same spot. So as you all know, when you rotate the spout all the way to the back, that deflector has to come up quite a ways. And when you're chopping, it's nothing to have it flip up out of the box. It's, you're busy, and you're busy trying to drive. Well, what Spout Pilot does is it keeps it right in the center of the box. It's got that all calculated out, so no matter where you rotate, you never have to touch the deflector. And that is that thing was pretty slick. And it worked really well. Will that also change if your driver is wandering in and out too? That do not compensate for that. So you, you will have to, then, then you should have hands free and then be able to yell at your driver to stay in the same spot. But now what it does do, that's a good question. What it does do, if your driver decides to be an idiot and drive one row further over, if you change it, that's the new setting. If you just touch the deflector, then now it stays in that position no matter where you rope to. So he's going to show that to you, and then he's going to drive through them tires. So you guys can see how slick that is. Now last night we had some guys that couldn't come back this morning, and we were a little nervous. We didn't, we didn't check it out in the darkness. And uh, so I was, the tires aren't a perfect windrow either, because it's fascinating to me that it worked. 
we wanted, we were going to get some feed and put a windrow feed down the black duck, but the fair wasn't real crazy about the mess that would be. So tires was the next best thing. The tires, you know, they're all they're all round, but it picked it up in the dark last night. And so we're going to watch that thing drive through tires. And after we're done here today, I'd like to have everybody jump in that cab and drive that themselves. It'll only take you a couple minutes, and we're going to have that thing running. You guys need to see how easy that road track is. It, it's hooked up to the same thing that the corn head was. So, without any further ado, we're going to walk back to that corner, um, and I'll give. Uh, are you going to need a microphone? I don't think so. Okay, big boy. We'll, we'll let you do it. Though. Before he starts, do all you guys know how to tell, you know, the boss is so ingenious. This is a 494, right? You guys heard all the lingo stuff yesterday, so this is the 494 series and the 900s and, and the 870s, 890s are 492s. But ironically, even in those series, we have changes. So this is a 494, but this is a 2012. And now, how the way you tell the 2012 has green piece here. And the 494s before 2012 are white. Like, oh, we don't have the white pieces on that one, but that's, if, if someone tells you to get a 2012 or newer, it'll have to have this green plastic on. But there's other changes in it as well. Also, it's a depth machine. So, go ahead, Forrest. All right, let's get started with a little emission stuff. A lot of you guys probably have new pickups, new tractors, running different emissions remediation systems. Alrighty, with Kloss, they're using strictly urea injection, add blue, def, what have you. The benefit of using this system is it's a fixed cost emissions treatment. A lot of you guys are custom guys, this helps. You can base your pricing on a fixed cost of per gallon. You're gonna burn two to three percent urea for every gallon of fuel you use. You can base this on the running. If you have a system like a lot of John Deere's are running and other manufacturers where they're running EGR and DPF, a particulate filter. That is going to be a variable cost emission depending on field conditions, temperature, air filter, engine, qual engine oil quality, fuel quality. You're going to have changes in how much fuel you burn to regen that system. There is no fixed cost to it. It is a variable cost that will change over time. This is easy. You can add 2% to your fuel consumption for your urea. Done. All right. Kloss is running urea injection on the 900 through 960 choppers. 970s and 980s are above the horsepower range, so they will get to remain as a tier 2 engine until 2014. The benefit of that, with, along with buying horsepower credits from the EPA, is there's no emissions. None. They run straight out the exhaust, turbos wide open. So you guys think in 960s, it might be a benefit to get a 970. Save a little money in the long run in additional emissions treatment. All right, a couple things with your AdBlue system. Just think of it as another fuel system. Clean, 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 clean. When you remove this cap, clean off around it before you put anything in there. They made this fancy little block off plate here. Blow out a little air, it'll force it out instead of forcing it into the tank if you have anything in there. Before you fuel it, this one's remove this screen. Take some hot water, rinse it out. Very, very important. This screen will crystallize. You'll end up with urea running down the side of your tank and leaving a nice white sludge. Clean it out. Takes a couple minutes, once a week, whatever. Very simple. It's just a quarter turn. Put your finger in and pull out. 
do not fill your tank with that removed. I've had a lot of issues with that. Impurities in urea will re react. It's 60% water, 30%, well, it's 32% and 68% water and an ammonia compound, which is urea. Do not mix your own urea. There are people online who are selling pure urea. You will never get the compound right. You'll end up with overheating and burning up modules in your computers. All right? So don't mix it. Use the screen when you're pulling or when you're pouring. For you guys buying bulk urea, urea tank care. You cannot use a metal tank. There are very, very few chromoly based metals that are allowed to be tanked. From the research I did, there are thousands of dollars for these tanks. Your best bet is a polypropylene or a polyethylene black tank. Your normal black fuel storage tank. Make sure it is new. If it is not new and you have diesel, diesel will break down your urea. Very quick, a couple, couple hours in a tank with a little bit of diesel, ruin a whole tank of urea. Gasoline will not mingle with urea. It will separate and cause an explosion in your fuel system in your exhaust system, blowing out exhaust pipes and making a mess. New tanks only. Alrighty. On choppers equipped with urea, you have a urea pump. It's down here in the frame rail. A little difficult to get to, but it is there. Two 13 millimeter bolts will remove the cover. There is a fuel filter cap, or a urea filter cap there. That urea filter needs to be changed every 500 hours. It is imperative. If you get clogging in that, your machine will derate. The derate's on a tier. Your first 30 minutes, it's just going to have a buzzer. Second 30 minutes, it's going to have a buzzer and a light on the dash. After that second 30 minutes, you start losing horsepower. If you go into full derate, you are at 80% loss of horsepower. You cannot get that back without a computer if it goes into full derate. We will have to come down there with our mini diag and retune your machine. Do not let it go into full derate. Stop. You have an issue. These things know the health of their system and they will not run. They cannot run. They are not allowed to by the EPA. This is not something Claus does to make it difficult for you. This is something the EPA has mandated on all manufacturers. All right. With that being said, tank levels. You can derate based on tank level. When you reach 25%, you are going to get a buzzer. It will keep going until you have no power. Once you get to the no power D rate due to tank level, you need to fill it above 25% and let it idle for 10 to 15 minutes. Do not throttle it up. Do not try moving during this 10 to 15 minutes. The computer will rebase itself, and you will be good to go after that 10 to 15 minutes. All your lights on your dash will go up. It may be quicker depending on the machine learning curve. So that's very important. If it was ever to be run out by an operator, just fill it above 25%, run for 10 to 15 minutes. Alright, urea crystallizes with air. So any of you guys who have this, when you shut the key off, you'll hear a lot of air going psh, 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 psh. That is forcing urea back into the tank. Keeps it out of all the fine points in the line. You have your urea metering valve. If you come around here and look, Yeah, it's a little difficult for a panel like this, but it's right back here. That is where all your urea is measured for injection into your piping. That is where any clogs are going to happen. There is a very fine screen in there. Any of you guys who have urea flow codes come up, go ahead and call and we can walk you through how to remove that screen. Once again, soak it in some hot water and you'll be good to go. There's also a urea heater element in there. If that heater is not working, you will get crystallization too. There is an error code that will come up for that. So, with that being said, the way the error codes on Mercedes work, there is not enough storage in CBIS to keep the error codes for the engine. So, when you're going through a field and you see an error code, Please, keep a pad of paper, take a screenshot with your cell phone, do something, record that error code. I will have to bring my computer out and plug into your engine to get that error code back. You cannot get it through CBIS. 
Recording error codes can be the difference from us diagnosing a problem here and us traveling to the middle of Oregon or Washington to re get your machine going. Please write down error codes. So your urea is injected in here, it mixes in your pipe and comes back to your SCR catalyst. What that does is with temperature and flow, it causes a reaction and you produce water, oxygen, CO2. A touch of nitrogen too. The air coming out of this machine is cleaner than the air you're breathing right now. It is incredible. You cannot kill yourself running one of these machines in your garage. I highly don't recommend it though, in case you have a machine flaw. <laughs> With the biggest change on these urea systems is the additions of two computer systems and a CAN bus. Therefore, more computer issues. But please don't mess with these. They are fine-tuned machines. They work really good when they're left alone. This gets really hot. Please don't touch it when after you've been running. Had a lot of issues with hay building up right here. Blow these off after running for the day. You'll save yourself a fire, save yourself machine issues. With that being said, are there any questions on your re injection? Certainly. You said on your metering valve that's where you'll have issues. You don't have any issues at the injector? Absolutely not. Your injector is so hot, your exhaust temperatures will melt away any crystallization. And you don't have carbon buildup blocking nope. that? Basically, at that point, if you look at your injector, it's a hook. Okay. Okay. The injection nozzle faces away. Your flow from your turbo is pushing all your air that way. You'll get no carbon buildup on the tip. You may get some on the knuckle, but not on the tip. So it's not like the Cummins where they were recessing it in a little hole. Yeah. No. That's all no. I did was just plug up. All no. The time. No. no issues like that. It's been a very there's been very few issues with this system. 90% of the issues that Foss has seen have been directly related to urea care and maintenance. We'll move on to that real quickly. Your urea, big question for guys is how much urea can I stock up? One year. That is all your urea is good for. One year from date of manufacture. It says it on the bottle. When it was manufactured, best by date, just like your beer. <clears throat> it needs to be stored in room temperature dark. When we say dark, we mean UV light. No sunlight, no tanning lights, etc. If it is in sunlight, above 80 degrees or below 32 degrees, its shelf life diminishes to 90 months. Right. Now, care of these machines during the winter. A lot of you guys are in colder climates. When you park this machine at the end of the summer, Draw out all but 25% of your tank. The reason they do this is because of freezing, separation of urea. The theory Klaus came up with is the size of the tank, if you draw it down to 25%, fill it completely full in spring, you will not have issues with separation. You will have enough to dilute that out. Any particles that do crystallize will be caught by the filter. You have enough filter area cover it. Alright, this system utilizes the air compressor. Air leaks must be fixed on these. If you lose air pressure on these machines, you will have issues with urea. Without air, like I said earlier, you can't clean out all the orifices, you'll end up with clogging, plugging, and you'll be done. How often does this expansion pipe here cause a leak and cause problems with the filtration system? Because I know on the other rigs over the road and other uh, ag equipment, that's a major problem on a lot of them. A lot of the issues that they saw in some of the Lexion and other choppers and early prototypes is they were injecting it too close to the SCR. Yes. They injected it right at the turbo. Uh -huh. If you look at this, it's got a special adapter compared to the older. 900s and 930s with the inline six and the other V8, it's right there. Your reaction immediately starts taking place. 
by the time it gets here, all your urea is atomized. Yeah. And your reaction starts in here. So this one here isn't so reliant on the uh, pressure that's in the tailpipe no. like the other systems are. Because no. I know that if you get a little pinhole in the exhaust on one of those, well, not nearly as much. Work. Not nearly as much because the reaction is happening so soon, you don't have anything that can separate before it gets there. They eliminate a lot of issues. They put a lot of work into this system to make it ready. <laughs> as flawless as possible moving into this next tier of emission. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, just in case you're wondering, we sold one of the early ones, a prototype, and didn't have any issues with it, ran a whole year, and Kloss came out and totally changed it to this, and changed it. We didn't even know why we took all the stuff back off, so. They are keeping up with it, and um, that was it was a big change. It, it was a lot of money, but they just said, no, nope, we're going to make it all so they're all the same. And so I think we, that one ran a whole year, didn't it, Park? Didn't we run a whole year? No, no. So they've been very meticulous of making sure this works. I'm a little familiar with the old and diesel, diesel injection systems. These urea, it's constantly putting urea in. Percentage-wise, at an idle, it doesn't put much in. Okay, but when once you're getting it, up RPM and load? Once under load, it'll put a lot in. At top end, when you're wide open under even power band, mm -hmm. it won't put much in again, because yeah. you're burning, you're completely atomizing your fuel. You're having no residual black smoke or anything. It will start injecting urea before the engine starts putting out more smoke. It is that fast of a system. They had to add that additional CAN bus to keep up with the speed of change before the engine puts out any kind of emission. Okay. And you said in there is a SCR and a, and a DPF? No, there's no DPF, it's just an SCR. It's just an SCR. Yeah. Selective catalyst production. Yeah. It's uh, for any of you guys who ever had cars with a catalytic converter, same thing. Except to break down the diesel particulate, you need to add urea. It's an ammonia-based product, breaks the particulate matter right down, comes out clean air. You can't get one of these engines to smoke. It just won't happen. The nice thing about an SCR versus a DPF, a DPF is a filter. There is resistance. An SCR is what you call a pass-through filter. It's a honeycomb. It goes through these platinum-coated fins. There is a reaction that takes place and it comes out clean. No resistance. There's no resistance versus DPF. So like in the DPFs, occasionally you would have to take them out and get baked. You'll never have to Never have that. to have this re-platinumed or baked in the life of the machine. There's no breakdown of the catalyst wall. Because that urea is what is the catalyst for the, component, for the chemical reaction. Instead of in a DEF where they're actually using the filter itself for the chemical reaction. Any questions? You guys all ready to buy one? <laughs> we just gotta get the operator school. <laughs> the operator school. Operator school, you fill it full and run it. Right. <laughs> yep. Okay, if there's no more questions, we're all going to go outside and, and watch that thing go through the, the track.